بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه دائما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to this session of inheritance Today inshallah we are finishing the talk of the fixed chairs and beginning with the issue of تعصيب These are the two ways of inheritance Either you inherit with fixed chair or you inherit without a fixed chair However, before we move to the inheritance without a fixed chair we need to remind ourselves that of the 25 heirs that we have, there are seven heirs, seven heirs who inherit only with a fixed chair, only. Seven heirs, they don't inherit except with fixed chair. Who are they? Those seven heirs, they are the mother. She always inherits with a fixed chair, either one-sixth or one-third. That's the first one, the mother. Then the brother from a mother and the sister from a mother. They also inherit only with a fixed chair. We have the brother from a mother and the sister from a mother. They either take one-sixth if they are alone or they combine two-thirds, one-third, I'm sorry. They combine one-third if they are more than one. Then we have the grandmother. And the grandmother inherits only one-sixth. The grandmother, she inherits only one-sixth. So we have the mother, the brother from the mother, the sister from the mother, the grandmother. We have the wife also. She inherits either one-eighth or one-fourth. And the husband also. He inherits either one-half or he inherits one fourth. So the seven heirs, the mother, the brother from the mother, the sister from the mother, the grandmother, paternal and maternal, grandmother, the wife and the husband, they only inherit with fixed share, only. Then the second category, those who inherit without fixed share, without fixed share, always. If you give any one of them fixed chair, like half, fourth, sixth, then that is incorrect. Why? Because they always inherit without a fixed chair, and that is hasaba. Who are they? All of them are males, with the exception of one heir, the mistress. The mistress, the female master, she inherits without a fixed chair. She is hasaba. The master also, they are two. Then we have the son and the son's son. Then we have the full brother and the brother from the father. Then we have the uncle and then we have the cousin. Then we have the nephew and all of them, those either full or for a father. All those heirs, they inherit without fixed share always. Those are 12. Then we have Two heirs, sometimes they inherit without a fixed chair, sometimes they inherit with a fixed chair, and sometimes they combine, both of them. And this is the father and the grandfather. The father and the grandfather, they inherit one-sixth only. That's a fixed chair. When do they inherit one-sixth only? When there is male child, son or son's son. If there is a son for the deceased, the father takes only one-sixth or the grandfather, he takes only one-sixth. So he doesn't take anything else. That's a fixed chair. Then he inherits only without the fixed chair if there is no offspring. If there is no offspring, he inherits the remainder. These are important rules that you need to remember. If there is female offspring, then he combines. He inherits one-sixth plus the remainder. He combines fixed share and tasib together. So they are two, father and grandfather. The last category, those who inherit with fixed share and without a fixed share, but they don't combine. They don't combine the two. Who are they? They are the four females, the full sister, the sister from a father, the daughter, and the son's daughter. Now the daughter, she has a fixed share, one half or two daughters, they have two-thirds. That's fixed share. If there is a brother to them, 
a son to the deceased, then they inherit without a fixed share, two to one. That's the ratio, depending on their number. So it's variable. Then the same thing with the full sister and the sister from a father. If there is a full sister and full brother, then it's the ratio, two to one. So this is important. Whenever you begin solving the problems and the cases of inheritance, remember what category are you solving? Who are those people that you want to give them? Are they belonging to the first category, those who inherit only with a fixed share? Are they of the second category, those who inherit without a fixed share always? Are they from the category that they combine? So what is their share? Or they are from those who might inherit this way or they might inherit that way. So we have four types of heirs, including the 25 heirs. So whenever you start solving a case, ask yourself what category those people belong to. Now we can move to the ta'sib. And the ta'sib, linguistically, it's taken from the root word asaba. Asaba is a verb in the past. يعصبوا, and that's why we have the term isaba, which is something that is tight around the head. And that's where the word came for the group of people, a gang, group of people that are called isaba also. Why the asaba are called asaba? Because they are surrounding the man. And what's meant by the asaba, the relatives, the male relatives of the people. If there is something happening, your people, your relatives will stand up for you. So that's where it came from linguistically. Technically, in inheritance, the asaba are those who inherit without a fixed share. There is really no specific term for them. And scholars said it's sufficient to count them instead of defining them. So they are the ones who surround the person and anyone that was not mentioned in the heirs, the 21 heirs that are repeated, like the uncle, the cousin, the nephew, the full brother, the brother from the father, all of them, the son, the son's son, all of them are asaba, all of them. So when it comes to ta'sib, there are certain rules that you need to keep in consideration. There are groups of asaba, there are groups of asaba, and based on their strength. There are groups and there are also sides. The group that is strongest is the offspring, the son. He is the strongest asaba and that's why he deprives most people. If the son is inheriting, then the brother from the mother does not inherit. The full brother does not inherit. The sister does not inherit. The daughter of the son does not inherit. All of them do not inherit. Okay, so he deprives many people. That's why he is the strongest, the son. Then from his side, there is also the son's son, the son's son. Also, he is strong. But when they are together, when they are together, the nearest to the relative, to the deceased, he takes the money. That's the second ruling. So the first one, we have the strongest sides. The strongest side is the side of the childhood. Then the side of the parenthood, the father and the grandfather, they come next. We have the son, the son's son, and then we have the father and we have the grandfather. Then we have the side of the brotherhood. We have the full brother. Then we have the brother from the father. Then we have the side of the unclehood from the father's brother. We combine both of them. The uncle, which is the father's brother. So these are the areas of ta'sib. They are four. We have the, sibling, uh, the children, the son and the son's son, that's the strongest. Then we have the parents, the father and the grandfather. Then we have the siblings, the brother, full brother and brother from a father. Then we have the uncle, the full uncle and the uncle from the father. These are the sides of Tasib. Now, 
if there is a son who is in a strong area and then we have uncle the rule in inheritance is that only one asaba will inherit with ta'sib that's the rule and it's taken from the hadith of the prophet sallallahu baqiya whatever is left it belongs to the nearest male relative so if we have a son and an uncle we cannot give both only one will take who's stronger it is the son so he takes everything another example we have a nephew you have a brother's son from your father's side only only from your father's side so you and your brother you share the same father and that's why your brother's son is meeting with you through his father that you and him share the same father but you have a different mother and he has a different mother so he is a nephew to you from the father only then you have uncle who is full uncle he and your father they have both parents father and mother if you have a nephew and uncle who inherits the uncle or the nephew the side of the nephew is stronger because he comes from the side of the brotherhood but he is only from one area but that does not count he is stronger so he inherits so if there is a nephew and there is uncle it doesn't matter if the uncle is full uncle and the nephew is half nephew from the side of the father still the nephew is stronger and that's why he will inherit so again this is the rule in ta'sib that the area that is stronger whether it is full or half it will take precedence over the other weaker asaba then we have the categories of ta'sib there are people that they by themselves asaba what does that mean they are asaba by themselves because whatever the case is they will inherit without a fixed chair like the son what we call them asaba bin nafs whenever he is there he inherits without a fixed chair then we have asaba bil ghair and that is the daughter the son's daughter the full sister and the sister from the father asaba bil ghair usually they have a fixed chair like either one half or two thirds or in the case of the son's daughter and the sister from a father it might be one sixth that's asaba bil ghair why because those fixed chairs will be removed and will be replaced with the ratio two to one when they have their male brothers to them like daughter and son the son will take twice the share of the daughter so the daughter became asaba why with the son asaba bil ghair that's the second category we have asaba bin nafs asaba bil ghair and finally we have asaba ma'al ghair asaba because of the others and they are two remember those two people it's very important i mentioned it twice this is the third time they are the full sister and the sister from the father whenever there is female children the daughter and the son's daughter they become asaba wal akhawatu in takun banatu the sibling females as long as there are female children they become asaba they cannot inherit now with a fixed chair what's the example i will give you a case very simple case two daughters two daughters son's daughter and two full sisters two daughters son's daughter and two full sisters how much the two daughters will inherit how much the two daughters will inherit the two daughters here will inherit two-thirds two-thirds what about the son's daughter she will not inherit anything she is deprived why 
there is no the owner of the one half, there is the owner of the two thirds. And one area cannot take more than two thirds. Remember this always. One area cannot take more than two thirds. The two daughters, how much they take? Two thirds. The daughter of the son, she doesn't take anything. What about the two full sisters? Now, are they deprived? No. Again, remember the rule. As long as there is female children, female offspring, the siblings, female, they will inherit without a fixed share. Without a fixed share. So the two daughters took two thirds. The two full sisters will take the remainder. What is left? We have two thirds. What is left is one third. That will be their share. That's what we mean by saying they are asaba with the others. Asaba with the others. With the daughters, the son's daughters, the full sister and the sister from the father, they become asaba. They inherit without a fixed share. So these are the categories of asaba. These are the rulings of ta'sib. Next, inshallah, we will continue with practice. And after that, we will move to the next step. So until next week, inshallah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.